Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be interviewing Tom from Brisbane, Australia. When I first met Tom, he told me he was running an agency out of Brisbane and he was doing quite well. I caught up with him last month and he said, hey, guess what? I don't run my agency anymore. I actually switched over to 100% affiliates. So I said, hey, Tom, tell me about what that's like. I mean, how's everything going for you? And he said, I 3 x my income in just seven months. So I got him to sit down and tell me the story and then I had just thought, Dang, I gotta get this on an interview. So I convinced him to come on the show, and here we are. We're gonna hear everything about how this experience was for Tom, and in true fashion of how I'd like to do interviews, you're gonna get everything. He's gonna spill the beans on how he does all his rankings, where he gets all the services from, how he buys his links, why he does social signals, on site SEO, everything. So tune in, this is gonna be a great interview. All right, so Tom, how's it going today? Hi, Matt. Good, good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming on the show. Or this is not really a show. This is just an interview. But thanks for coming on anyways. That's all right. Happy to do it. Yeah, why don't you start off just telling us um, first your name and how old you are. All right. My name's Tom de Spiegelare. Uh, I'm 31. Cool, cool. And where are you from? Um, at the moment, I'm living in Brisbane in Australia. But originally, I'm from Belgium. I moved here in 2011. Okay. And mm. tell me, well, I know that you're an SEO because I met you before, but before you were an SEO, what, what is your background and what was your education like? Well, so I grew up in Belgium. I, I went for a bachelor in um, graphical and digital media with a specialization in multimedia production, which is a really, really broad sort of education. It covers anything from basic drawing to design, both for web, and, and print uh, to 3D animation, uh, special effects, video editing, and of course a bit of coding. So yeah, very, very broad. Uh, and then I guess my first real job, background-wise, my first real job was as a consultant in a global consultancy firm doing uh, flash animations back when that was still a thing, mm -hmm. uh, and, and graphic design for web. Um, and I don't know, after a while, it didn't really feel well. I needed more of a human connection, so I went into sales and earned a lot less money, actually, in that second job, but I was mm. a lot happier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. And so, and I think eventually, you know, when I met you in Chiang Mai, you told me that you're living in Australia and you started working for yourself over there. How did that happen? Well, so when I moved to Australia, initially I was doing a few years of sort of like bits and pieces, not earning that much money, but everything I was doing was mostly related to building WordPress sites and ranking them using SEO. So in the end, when I actually got good at it, um, I ranked a web design agency site because, well, by that time I made so many WordPress sites and I knew how to do SEO shit, so I just ranked a web design site and then I started becoming a web designer for myself. Okay, right on. It, the interesting thing is like most people that I run into move to a third world country or like a cheaper country like Thailand in order to bootstrap and get on their feet doing their own solo gig, but you moved to one of the most expensive countries on the planet. What was that like bootstrapping in Australia? Uh, I was nervous, uh, mm. anxious. It was the first time I was actually working for myself. I uh, didn't really plan that much, so in hindsight, I should have planned it way better. I did have a few things that helped. Uh, one was I was living with the in-laws, which means so it sort of cuts rent in half. And the second point is I, well, I drained my savings coming over to Australia and paying for living expenses for me and my now wife uh, for the first few months. I paid for the wedding, etc. But in return, Jessica, my wife, um, said, all right, I'm going to work from now on for like a year or a year and a half while you figure out what to do with your life, mm. which was the perfect time for me to basically skill up on the SEO and then in the end become a web designer. That's, that's really good. So it's like the family took a gamble with you, but it was a very good gamble. And that's awesome. You had that support going in. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. So. You decided, uh, you, you started building um, web design sites. When did you make the switch over to doing SEO? And like, you must have, I don't know, learned SEO somewhere, right? How'd that happen? Yeah, that was really random. Um, I think around 2009 or 2010, a friend messaged me on Facebook with this 
super course called Internet Secrets, and it basically um, t t basically taught how to build really low competition niche sites on EMDs. Um, the course was crap. Uh, the concept was working at the time, but the course was really, really crap. But it did, it did sort of spark something, and I I, I went with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's basically how I got into SEO. I mm -hmm. started building more and more niche sites just to see if I could actually rank anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, pretty cool. Everyone gets their start on some weird course. Mine was uh, the thirty day challenge, and um, it was the ranking technique was based off of just make as many easy and article <laughs> submissions as possible, and of course oh. it worked, right? Yeah, cool. those days. Yeah, <laughs> those days. Uh, next question. So since then, where have you learned your SEO from? Any like courses you've taken or any mentors you've had or anything like that? Well, most of the SEO I know, well, let's say 70% of the SEO I know was mostly self-taught and sort of, I don't know, reading be, between the lines on, on places like back then Warrior Forum and Black Hat World and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, most courses you came across just led you down a wrong path, and you you'd lose like six months and two thousand dollars doing the wrong things, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I started sort of testing myself. And in the end, I figured out how to rank a site that actually that could actually survive a few Google updates. Uh, they eventually crash crashed, of course, uh, because I was still way way too aggressive. Mm. Um, but as for now, the actual courses, blogs, and people that I, um, yeah, that I actually um, suggest to follow would be, aside from you, obviously, uh, Charles Float, Daryl Rosser, Brian Dean. He's really really white hat, but I think if you sort of, I don't know, you can you can, you can you can change perspective on his stuff, so you can convert his white hat stuff to a more gray hat sure. um, thing, which is you just yeah good. Um, Gotch SEO has a really good blog, uh, and as, of course the local client takeover crew. They're really good for client SEO and how to rank locally in the in the maps. Mm -hmm. And then um, actual courses would be Lion's Eel Scientific Rankings, mm. um, and then I was really surprised by Tung Tran's Amazon course. I think. What's it called? AMZ Affiliate Bootcamp. Because mm -hmm. it goes from really A to Z, from, from choosing your niche to keyword research to content creation, how to create content, to link building, to just basically everything. It's a really good one for uh, beginners. Um, and then what's another one? I think Charles Float's recent on-page course with Daniel Cutridge had oh, some really good gems in there, uh, definitely regarding... Uh, link sculpting and stuff like that. And well, actually, I think I heard you saying you're making a course too, so that's going to be on the list. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Working on something right now. There's just some things more complicated than sharing on the blog, and there's a lot of things I wanted to share. So thinking about putting a course together, it's not, it's not promised yet. That'd be um, awesome, man. That'd be actually, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So like. Most of the people you mentioned were you know, gray hat SEOs, and there's a couple of white hats mixed in, like Tongue, uh, Gotch, and Brian yeah. Dean. Brian Dean? Yeah, Brian Dean. Um, yeah. So would you consider yourself being normally a gray hat SEO with streaks of white in it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. If, if mm -hmm. you put it into numbers, I'd say 70% gray hat, 30 white hats, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, that's pretty much like what I do, too. There's... Um, pluses and minuses of each side and comboing together is like the best result that I've seen so oh, far. Definitely. Definitely. Cool. Um, tell me about your agency. Like the agency that you told me about last year. Rest in peace. How did you get yeah. started in that? Um, how did I get started in it? Mm -hmm. um, well, that was back in 2013 when I finally figured out how to rank a site. Still way too aggressive, of course. Mm -hmm because links were super cheap back then, 2013, you could rank anything within a week, almost. Um, so yeah, I, I just popped up a site, I ranked locally really, really quickly, and then started getting clients, and because of my sales experience back in Belgium, I could uh, convert those clients into actual sales. So that was, that was pretty great. Okay. Um, yeah. And then... And, 
Um, so what, after you built it up, what finally made you decide yeah. to can it? Yeah, so I'd, I'd heard about this affiliate SEO and I've, 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 I did affiliate SEO in the past during my sort of my upscaling period. I always wanted to go back to it, but I thought it was too difficult until I started seeing results. And then if I weighed the pros and cons of agency versus affiliate SEO, it's it's to me it's no brainer. And and for me really it's it's the clients that were a bit of hmm. a bit of the hassle. I mean some people could handle it quite well and they can scale agencies very well and can can handle the clients very well. I'm just maybe I was just going after the wrong market, but I felt seriously under undervalued and even after raising my prices considerably. I always had the feeling I'd get way more out of my own skills by actually building my own sites instead of building sites for others. Mm. And yeah, and it didn't help that you, if, if there are web designers out there listening to this, you, you probably notice some clients, they, they, they feel like as soon as, as soon as they've got a website, they're going to get leads. And, and even though you, you might tell them in, in the meeting up front, like, you know, getting a website, it's great, but you need that marketing sort of budget behind it to, 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 get, it, to get it to generate leads, and a lot of clients didn't really get that. Um, so that that's, yeah, that's why I really wanted to sort of get out of the agency style and more to the affiliate style. And also, man, I recently read or listened to uh, Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Workweek, and he talked about the disconnect between time and the amount of money that you can generate yeah it's arbitrary right that, yeah that that's exactly what i wanted to achieve but it's while you're supporting a family and two kids it's difficult to make that switch and and like you mentioned it doesn't help that brisbane and australia in general is, is pretty darn expensive hmm. uh, so yeah my my main issue trying to switch was while I had recurring revenue coming from hosting clients and I was having, I had some maintenance packages with most of the work automated, which was great. It wasn't actually nearly enough money to allow me to create more time so I could actually make that switch. Mm, got yeah. it. So yeah, I mean, you really struck a chord with me. You know, I don't have a family yet, but I'm already like a conservative businessman in to begin with, right? To add a family on top of that, like I would need a certain amount of padding in order to make that switch from having X amount of money per month moving on to potentially losing that and trying a new business venture completely. May I yeah. ask how much uh, recurring revenue you had coming from the agency? Well, if, if you're talking passive recurring revenue, not much at all. Um, but on a month-to-month -month basis, I was, I think I was averaging 10K in profits, mm -hmm. but that was, well, pretty much busting my ass off doing web work um, and of course the hosting uh, packages on, on top of that mm -hmm. um, yeah about 10 grand a month and and while that might seem a lot in, in Brisbane while supporting again while supporting a family with two kids and a wife uh, that doesn't actually get you that far hmm. uh, yeah okay. so yeah the, the difference between now and then when I was actually having to work that much, it's just, it's insane. The amount of freedom I have now, it's, it's mm. the real surreal. How long did it take you to get to that 10K a month profit level? Three years. Okay. So uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it took only six months to replace that with actual passive affiliate income. <laughs> All right. just, if only, yeah, if only I'd started sooner, it's just, fuck man. Is it, uh, mm. what is it, hindsight is always twenty twenty. That's what they say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what kind of fears went through your head before you made the leap and actually just started firing clients? <clears throat> All right. So, the anxiety was mainly related to to the family, of course, because mm -hmm. well, they're always they're always the main priority. So, I needed to make sure that the cash flow is there at all times. Um, that being said, it did help a lot that almost by accident, I was actually working part-time at another agency as SEO manager, helping to replace their processes and increase margins and efficiency, etc. And this created sort of, a, sort of a, a buffer and we could lower our standards of living just a little bit um, 
while I was making the switch. And then that gave me that nice buffer, that nice time to sort of make that switch happen. And it actually, it, it, it worked out, which, yeah. Okay. So um, how did you start firing your clients? Like, what was that like? Um, very slowly. I still have a lot of them. Um, on my sort of hosting plans and maintenance packages and uh, definitely the sort of the low maintenance ones where most of it is automated um, and then um, I started forwarding all the new leads to that agency I was working at and all the leads that requested sort of random website tweaks I forwarded to another agency um, to deal with those mm -hmm. so yeah. at the moment yeah at the moment I've virtually have no client work anymore. Okay, uh, so you were probably making commission on those leads as well, right? Yeah, so um, I think it's 5% commission at the moment. Cool, yeah. okay, so made a little money out of that too. Yeah. All right, all right, so now you're client free. Um, what was it like, okay, so have you had experience with the affiliate SEO before you just jumped into it? Yeah, so like I mentioned before, when I was upscaling in SEO, I was creating a whole heap of um, niche yeah. sites, excuse me, I had to try and rank them in Google, and they were all sort of Amazon affiliate based. Mm -hmm. um, so, so really, the really the, the big switch to affiliate SEO happened around mid 2016, but I was dabbling in it for a few years between 2010 and 2012. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, at one point, I was first in the U.S. for uh, how to make ice cream. So That's a good informational one. keyword, but yeah. massive search volume in, in the summer. Um, yeah, and then I converted people on site to buy ice cream makers because it's really nice price point, I think. Uh, yeah, that was a really good summer, actually. But yeah, anyway, uh, eventually, uh, all those niche sites got hammered by uh, Google updates because back then, again, 2010, 2012, you could... Just links were super cheap, and you could just churn and burn uh, as you pleased. Uh, and then around 2014, I think I switched to a paper lead because I, what was, what's the guy's name? Massive and passive or passive and massive? Brian, right? Yeah, Brian, Brian, yeah. So I started following him, and I thought, oh, yeah, there's, there's something into this. Mm -hmm. So I started making paper lead sites. Um, going after the usual verticals like plumbing and aircon and pest control, etc. Mm -hmm. And I used, uh, what did I, Serp Shaker? I used Serp Shaker mm. to dominate, yeah, mm -hmm. a, a sort of mass, mass post or mass page creator, right? Mm -hmm. And I used it to dominate a pretty big city and I was targeting the individual suburbs. And then one of those actually made me around a grand a month for six months before the company I was working with pulled the plug. So. I found it a bit, bit too much of a hassle in the end as well because I had to sort of screen the calls unless I hired a VA. Mm. But at that time, I was screening the calls myself, making sure I wasn't charging for calls that sort of weren't viable for them. Um, so I dropped them. The, the sites themselves are still live, generating leads, and they're actually being answered by real companies, but I'm not charging for the leads anymore. And instead, those sites are now um, part of my PBN. Oh, because, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> They had some link equity. Obviously, Google liked yep. them for some reason. So then you just said, yep. "Okay, you guys are now PBNs." That's awesome. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And they 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 work, they work awesomely actually. So hey, so they're probably not in the same niche as your affiliate sites. You just don't care. No. Okay. Uh yeah, yeah no, I really didn't care. Just put put a blurb on the front page, sort of morphing the topic a little bit, link to an inner page that's all about the new topic of the target site, and then just link out. Yep, that'll do it. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. Cool. So how many like different affiliate experiments did you have in the past that prepared you for the switch recently? Oh, at least 20. All man, right. at least 20. That's just all yeah, all, all really low 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 competition stuff and using a whole heap of really aggressive strategies again because low cost of links back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then this time around with affiliate, did you go with one niche or did you like try 10 of them at the same time? What that look like? Um, I, at the moment I have multiple niches going, but when I made the switch, I, I actively focused on a single niche, uh, just because I, I wanted to do it right. And I knew the niche itself was insanely competitive, but I thought, well, just why, why not go all out basically? Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah, so at the moment I've got multiple niches on the go, but only one of them is making the majority of the money, and the others are pretty new. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what I do. Like, I throw stuff against the wall, I see which one sticks, and then go hard in that one, and then you know continue to throw a small amount of the profit from that one against the wall again, so yeah. you can scale somewhere else. It's, it's a smart thing to do. It's pretty much yeah. I mean, yeah. it's the only model. Cool. Yeah, um, yeah so let's see. Um, did you use a brand new domain or an aged domain for this? Uh, aged, non-dropped, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was two and a half years, uh -huh. um, and in a very closely related niche. Mm. Okay. Um, I don't expect you to tell it straight up, but what niche is it, or what category of niche is it? Is it health or is it um, beauty? It's, it's, it's tech. Okay, tech, got it. Okay. Tech, yeah. Don't share more than that. <laughs> Yeah, no one, no one. Okay, um, let's see. So you said you use an age domain. What I typically see when I use an age domain for a money site, there's kind of like a, well, Charles calls it, calls it the repurposing sandbox. Mm -hmm. Well, basically what happens is you have your old domain, and even though the old domain might be also in the tech niche in your case, there's still a period of time where it's kind of stubborn. It's like a, a sandbox again. Did you experience yeah. that kind of thing? Um. I didn't really took much notice of, of, of sort of the big niche I went after, but I I think when I look back, I think there was definitely about two and a half months where not much was happening, and mm. then suddenly I saw, I saw a nice jump in rankings, so that might have been that repurposing sandbox. That must have been a huge relief yeah. for you, right? Like, oh my god, what did I do? I fired all these clients and then hockey stick. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, well, luckily it was sort of... A little bit the other way around like I, I prepped in advanced I prepped in advance so I didn't actually fire the clients before I knew something was gonna happen good man good man conservative approach I like it yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see what else um, okay let's get into actual SEO technique how do you do your keyword research all right well the initial keyword research back then um, with, with the big one was a combo of keyword finder to check the competition and then I used um, SEMrush to pull all ranking keywords from the top five competitors then merge everything remove all the duplicated ones and then basically I had every keyword I needed to dominate mm -hmm. yeah yeah and right right now I think I've replaced everything with hrefs like I don't need anything else yeah I just love it just yeah, for sure. It's it's becoming quite the Swiss army knife of SEO, right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, what else? So, all right. Did you go with a small niche site or did you go with a large authority site? How, how big is your site, first of all? Um, oh, that's a good question. I think it must be at least 200 posts on there, maybe 20 money pages. Yeah, 20 money pages is right. Uh, so authority side. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And yeah. I'm guessing you didn't write all that content yourself? No, no. Okay. Um, I, yeah, when I started out, I did because I could sort of react quicker to industry changes. So if something big happened in the industry, I could, could write a massive blog about it that was bigger than the other guys were doing and I was ranking for it and gaining traffic. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was good. Um, but at the moment, I... Yeah, outsource all my content, and it's usually uh, PBN Butler. Mm -hmm. Their pro and expert content. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really good. Yeah, a lot of people uh, think that PBN Butler is just used for PBN type content, maybe because of their name. But I use them a lot for money site content. They're actually quite good. Quite. quite yeah, I good. agree. They're yeah, they're they're awesome. It's a, they don't need much tweaking once they get back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely. And let's see, do you have any VAs working for you or did you use any VAs for this project? No, I just use sort of established teams I found either through the forums or through the Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be like, yeah, PBN uh, Butler, of course, and PBN Fox, just love those guys. Um, SERP Focus, also for content. Mm -hmm. um, and a few others, yeah. So only teams, really. Mm -hmm. And how, about how long were your articles? Like how many words were your well, money articles? I think if you look at the average, it would be 1,500 words, but if you look at the money page average, probably add another 1,000 on there, so 2,500 words. Okay, that's pretty solid. Yeah. And uh, yeah. like, what was, what was your frequency of new posts? Like, How often would you push something new out? Oh, in the beginning, not, 
not often at all. I was doing like one or two posts a month uh, just because I was maybe doing one manually and one sort of outsourced. Mm -hmm. And really occasionally I'd, I'd, I'd add a money page to target a new category of, of keywords. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, now I've got the content team on the job writing actually three posts a week uh, consistently to boost topical relevance for the harder to rank keywords. Mm -hmm. um, but the earlier stages where I wasn't actually doing that much was sort of before I really decided in my head I wanted to switch to full-time affiliate marketing. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, okay, did you do any, uh, people call it, I don't know, link sculpting, siloing, uh, link juice yeah. management. Did you do any siloing? Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, and then a lot of it. Um, and mostly using strategies I actually learned from you, your on-page SEO guide, and oh, cool. uh, Charles's on-page. Good. Uh, of course. Yeah. Um, don't, I, yeah, I wouldn't call it siloing anymore, I think. Maybe strategic interlinking, or like you said, link sculpting. Yeah. So basically just linking pages with traffic and or link juice to other pages so you can funnel both the authority and the relevance to sort of the right places you want it to end up at. Mm -hmm. And then well, while we're talking about link sculpting, because I know a lot of people haven't really delved that deep into it, I haven't really gone into it that advanced, but I, I do like to do a bit of it. So basically it means... <clears throat> minimizing useless interlinking. Um, I'm not talking about OBL, I'm not talking about outbound links, but actually sort of on-page interlinking. So you minimize the you minimize useless links like uh, non-relevant menu items, um, privacy policies, terms and conditions, etc., etc. So every link that leads to another on-page uh, page that you really don't need linking to, either remove it or turn it into a no-follow. Yep. Yeah, I kind of think of it kind of like plumbing, right? Like if you don't want the link juice flowing somewhere, you either remove that pipe or if you want to leave the pipe there, the link, then you know follow yeah. it. It's like you turn off the yeah. valve on that. Yeah, that's a great analogy, man. Yeah. 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 Sometimes good, good things come out of me. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, what other, do you have, okay, before we tidy up the on-site questions, I'm going to ask you, do you have any other on-site tips and tricks that really got some gains for you? Um. So yeah, definitely the interlinking. I can't stress that stress mm -hmm. strong. It's it's yeah, it's so important. Uh, together with having massive content with a lot of structured. Oops, sorry, something fell there. Yeah, we're good. Uh, with a lot of structured data, um, like headings and bullet points and images and videos, um, and also things people sort of overlook. Like if you're targeting different locations, actually add different pages as sub properties in uh, your Google search console and tag them with a different country. Mm. And if you have duplicate pages that, that talk about the same content, um, maybe add hreflangs, I'm sorry, add yeah, hreflangs to those pages, to those headers basically, so Google doesn't mix them up. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that, yeah. Very nice, okay. Um... That's it for the on-site. Let's ask some off-site SEO questions. What were the first links you sent to your site? Um, Web 2.0s, Web press releases, um, and citations together with social signals. Um, and pretty much, let's say anchor-wise, all generic and branded to the home page and my most important money pages. And all of these were done in the first like three weeks. So okay. basically sort of a bulk package. Right. And you could go aggressive on that because you were an age domain and yeah, you could just hit it, hit it hard in the first three yeah. weeks. That's perfectly yeah. fine. But definitely, would you do the same thing for a brand new domain? Would you go as, as aggressive? Actually, I, I did. And it, I think it landed me in this, in the sandbox. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was definitely too aggressive because I've, I've got a public sort of case study going on my blog. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, I talk about how I'm trying to rank in this pretty competitive niche and I go through what I'm doing at the moment and I did the exact same thing with that sort of bulk link push and it definitely landed me in like a six, seven, eight month sandbox. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, maybe don't do that with a new one. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, and you mentioned, okay, web 2.0, press release, social signals. Where did you get each of them from? Like, um, so what, web 2.0 is I... I um, 
I ordered from a service called White Hat Buzz. I don't know if a lot of people know this one, but it's, it's, it's pretty darn good. You can Google it. Um, and the others are basically all PBN Butler. So social signals, uh, press releases, um, and citations. Well, no, press releases and social signals, PBN Butler. And citations back then was Loganix. Hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. And at one point, did you start hitting with the good old PBNs? Hell yes. Uh, about three weeks in. All right. And okay. And then, okay, so you set it, everything up, your base, you got the web 2.0s and the social signals, then the PBN started rolling in. What yep. did you, do, how did you determine your anchor text selection? Um, I basically look at sort of the top five. So I get an idea of what they're doing on a page per page basis rather mm -hmm. than a sort of domain overview. I, I usually look at page per page. And then I try to use a little bit more par partial keywords or partial anchors than they do, okay. but still not too much. So it you know, still looks natural, basically. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. were you, let's see, were you assigning a certain type of keywords? Like most people like to say, okay, PBNs, these get my target anchors. And then, you know, your, your pillow anchors will go to your least, least important um, link types, like web, maybe your web 2.0s yeah. in this case. Were you doing something like that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So the web 2.0s and the press releases were generic and branded. And then the uh, guest posts, I also did guest posts, but that's later when the PBN started. Guest posts are uh, partial and branded, and then the PBNs partial and exact, uh, although I rarely, rarely use exact match, just because of, I don't know, it seems too aggressive, too natural. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how about social signals? How did you do the timing or how did you determine the timing on those? You said you're using PBN Butler, but yeah. like, were you just randomly sending them in or you're dripping them in? What'd that look like? I pretty much use actually your blueprint. So every, every few weeks you just uh, push out a batch basically. So mm -hmm. definitely not every week, but I'd say maybe at first every month and then every two months, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It just works. Um, yeah. What else do you use? Any other links that we're not thinking of besides the press release, citations, uh, Web 2.0s? Anything else that we're missing? That's, I don't think so. So guest posts, definitely. I don't use forum links or comments, and I definitely stay clear of uh, Tier 2 spamming now. Um, no, that's it. I think that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, and did you, okay, you mentioned guest posting. So did you do the outreach yourself, or did you outsource that? No, that's, that's something I outsource. Um, and at the moment, I tried a few in the past, but the ones I like right now are definitely love to link. They're mm -hmm. really good. And I recently started uh, testing Gotch SEO guest posts, and they came back uh, pretty good as well, actually. So I'm definitely going to keep ordering uh, boat services. Cool. Both awesome guys, Dan Parker and Nathan Gotch. Shout out to both of you guys. Good uh, service yeah. providers as well. Cool. Yeah. Um, any other off-site SEO tips for the viewers here today? So yeah, basically off-site tips. Um, well, your blueprint pretty much gives everybody what they need. Uh, the only thing I would I would say is they'll they'll have to replace a lot of the links that you use as PBNs with just different links because we don't really all have thousands of PBNs lying around. Um, we all wish we had, <laughs> uh, but but really your blueprint your blueprint is the perfect route to, to, to clean rankings. And I think also keep in mind that in my opinion, the only links that really make an impact are the ones that have juice rankings and traffic going to the actual page that links out to your site. So not the main, but the actual page. So for example, guest posts, they're okay, they're good, but it would be a lot better if those posts actually got traction and links and rankings and traffic, etc which is why PBNs are so powerful because they already have authority. So it doesn't take a lot to create a simple post that starts ranking for long tails and starts getting traffic. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much what I suggest is try and get links that actually get traffic aside from the link juice and use those links um, for your partials and your exacts and leave everything else for the gener generics and the brands. Yeah, exactly. I just want to touch upon a really good point that you made there. 
and, and uh, elaborate a little bit. So you mentioned that links on uh, properties that have traffic, that have some kind of juice there, are the ones that kick in and give you a good value. There, yeah. are, there actually is um, a way to get outreach links that have value like this too, which would be a link insertion into an existing article that has links and it's popular, for example. A uh, little yeah. bit harder to do. You're going to have to do the, the outreach yourself and negotiate it yourself, but definitely a, a good way to do it as well. I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen the services and I've, I've used like James Gregory's links as well, which is, I think, what he does. And so links and aged posts. And they, they, work, they work pretty well. Um, but I don't know. I, somewhere I switched to a mindset that, the, that I sort of want more control. Like for example, PBNs wise, I, I never I never outsource sort of the PBN links themselves, and I never rent PBNs. I just I only buy them myself. Mm -hmm. So I've got full control. Cool. But yeah. Control freak. I like it. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so let's talk about the money. Um, if you're comfortable uh, answering this question, go ahead. But okay, you said you were doing 10k with client. Yep. What's affiliate life looking like for you now? All right. Before we head to now, let's sort of go back in time to pre the switch. So last November, um, mm -hmm. I went to Chiang Mai. Pre Chiang Mai, I was doing at the height of it five hundred dollars a month in sort of affiliate passive income, which at that point was I was so happy. That's like two weeks of kindy for my kids, woo for free. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to Chiang Mai, and man, by the time I got back from Thailand, I was making three grand a month. What? And I was only there for fuck. For like five days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was really quick. What what, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, I, I do know what happened, but it's it's the main thing was I met all you guys and really sort of gave me a kick in the butt to start changing stuff. And of course, I brought my laptop. So immediately after like day two of meeting some of you, I started sort of working on my site massively and doing a whole heap of conversion rate optimization of stuff that I sort of talked about with people and. And the good thing about conversion rate optimization is once once you do it, the gains are overnight, right? Yeah. Once you make a positive tweak, suddenly you, you wake up the next morning and stuff's exploding. Um, and that, that's basically how the majority of that, that, that gain from 500 to 3,000 happens mm -hmm. in five days. It was, it was absolutely insane. Um, so, well, for those of you listening, if you haven't got your ticket yet to go to Chiang Mai this, this November, really really strongly suggest you just get one now because it's going to be epic thanks for um, pitching that for me i'm the worst that's pitcher all right. Happy to do it. <laughs> okay cool thanks <laughs> carry um, on and then if, if we jump back if we jump to now um i just last month i crossed uh, thirty thousand a month so that that's I basically 10x in seven months yeah um and you tripled the agency that took three years to build. Yes, and, and I did that in yeah six months uh, with passive income. <laughs> it's still surreal. It's real. Yeah. It's That's really awesome! Weird. Big congratulations, man. Thanks. Man. How okay? So for your affiliate sites, how are you monetizing? Like CPA or or um, just affiliate offers, really? Okay, normal yeah. straight up affiliate. Any other yeah. monetization methods? Do you slap AdSense on there or like yeah. any? Nah, don't want to risk it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about like, are you building an email list? No, it's it's on a to do list. I, mm. yeah, I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna do it. Well, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. I. Yeah, everyone always says like, okay, the the smart thing to do for your business is build an email list. It's it's yeah. for me. It's a trade off between, you know, I always believe in one page one goal right if you have affiliate website and you're trying to sell an offer just sell the offer you, sl you slap in a an email opt-in on there and it's just going to distract people it's going to take away from that but of that's, course there's a balance yeah. but i typically that, yeah yeah i typically don't put uh, email stuff on an affiliate site like that but maybe with an authority site so keep me filled in and let me know how that goes if you well, end up doing it yeah, actually, I'm, I'm thinking of just slapping the opt-in on, on blog posts and just leaving my money pages uh, alone. 
Yeah, why not? They're, they're not yeah. going to convert anyways. Well, so yeah, that's true. Well. Yeah, it's a good idea. Cool. Um, so now what are you going to do? I, I'm guessing you're not sitting on your haunches and just enjoying this 30K and drinking coconut every day. Um, are you scaling into other niches? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so um, at the moment, I'm reinvesting about 90% of what I earn uh, back yeah. into the sites. So right now, I'm actively sort of partnering with, with a whole heap of people in different industries I either just don't know anything about or have no passion in and then I do profit share. So they give me the wisdom and the knowledge of the market that they're in. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them actually write the content the contents themselves, so I don't have to worry about that. And they know the audience. And then I just take care of the website and the marketing, etc. And I just split the profits. Smart, it's like a lead spring type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. pretty similar. And um, can you share what niches those are? Mm, no. <laughs> All right, smart man. All right. Uh, any regrets moving into the affiliate world? No. Nah. Maybe I got lucky a little bit, but no, nah, not at all. It's it's sort of, I don't know, it's sort of a dream. I really never dared to dream. The potential is massive, and it's, it's sometimes really scarily overwhelming. Um, because, I don't know, I can stop working at, at any point, and the entire system will keep earning well into six figures a year without me having to... I don't know, touch anything for several months. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to be safe, if I, if I wanted to keep the system in pure maintenance modes, like no scaling involved, I'd have to work maybe two hours a week. Mm -hmm. Got it. It's it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, you you nailed it. You hit the home run. Good job, man. Uh, any advice to any listeners that were in the shoes that you were? You know, they they have an agency. Things are going well, but. Uh, they've had these these ideas and these thoughts of moving into affiliate and getting some more passive income and living, getting more time back in their life. Any advice to these folks? It's not it's not easy, but if if you can do it, if you if you have your agency running smoothly enough that you can sort of cut down on your own client hours, maybe you have enough staff to sort of take it all off you. If you can cut down on your own hours and still make enough to survive, I strongly recommend looking into starting your own authority side and maybe grab a course to guide you to this sort of minefield that is the SEO industry. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, it's, it's definitely a possibility. Just try and cut down on your own, your own work hours. And if you have enough to survive, just go for it. Okay. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. advice. And how about some just general advice to beginner SEOs in general? Like what, what would you say to a beginner SEO? <laughs> I've thought about this a lot, actually, when I sort of see the posts on Facebook, et cetera, or just talk generally with people. Um, I think, I, yeah, I have advice. It's if you don't have kids and you have a day job and you're earning money, instead of coming home and watching Netflix or instead of coming home and, and gaming or maybe going out, et cetera, sort of maybe two times or three times a week, instead of doing that, actually get behind the computer grab a decent course like Scientific rank, Rankings or AMZ Affiliate Bootcamp and, and, or the course that you're making and, and read and learn and, and most importantly, take action. Like mm. So many don't take action. They just absorb and absorb and absorb information and basically never actually do anything with it. Mm. And also definitely start with really low-hanging fruit so you can actually, um, I don't know, prove to yourself that you can do it. Because as soon as you get that confidence, confidence boost that you know you're ranking something that you chose and you worked on, um, you can you can you can basically scale from there. Yeah, that's a real big part of it. I I mentioned that a lot too because a lot of people learn SEO online, and it sounds like it works. The guy who you taught learned it from says it works, but you never really seen it. And until you have that experience of making it work, it's not real. And yep. it doesn't make sense That's to go all in on it. And another really important thing you, I heard you say is that, um, you know, make some sacrifices when you're young. You don't need to Netflix and chill every night. Maybe you need to do the chill part every once in a while. But yeah. um, you can make some sacrifices now, but look at the result, right? Now you work two hours a week or you could work two hours a week if you didn't want to scale. That's yep. the payoff, you know. You learn it that, now. Yeah, that's exactly right. Got it. Yeah. That's awesome, man. 
Well, I don't have any more questions. I just wanted to give you a big thank you for being such an open book and coming on and sharing everything with us. I wish you the best going forward. Keep me filled in on what happens with your life. And I'll see you in Chiang Mai pretty soon. Oh, definitely. Can't wait, man. Can't wait. All right. Take care, Tom. We'll see you around. Yep. See you, Matt.